In this video, we'll be learning how to use sidechain compression in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So you've probably heard of people delving into the dark art of sidechain compression and assumed it was for advanced users and that it'd be really difficult to implement. But I'm here to tell you today that I think that just about anyone can use this technique and it's really easy to implement in Cakewalk by BandLab. We're gonna be running through a couple of examples. With the first one, it's not a very common usage, but it does make it easy to see and hear what's happening. And with the second example, we're gonna be focusing on a really common usage of this technique. So please do stick around for all of that. Now, if this is your first time here and you do like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. Now let's get started with a quick recap of compression itself. So normally pieces of music have some quieter parts and some louder parts. And the difference between those two is referred to as the dynamic range. Now, if they're closer together, then we'd say that the music has a narrow or a small dynamic range. And if they're further apart, we'd say it has a large or a big dynamic range. Now, if we take this piece of music and we begin to increase the volume, at some point, the loudest parts are gonna reach their limit, their peak. And if we go up above that, we're gonna get what's called clipping. And usually clipping doesn't sound very good at all, especially with digitally recorded pieces of music. So with a compressor, we use it as a kind of an automatic volume control. And we say, hey, look, when those loudest parts get too loud, start to turn them down. Now we've narrowed our dynamic range. And what that means is when we start to turn the volume up as a whole, it takes a lot longer before those loudest parts reach that peak, the limit. Now the consequence of that is that the quieter parts have got much louder than they would have been if we hadn't used compression. And that has the effect of the overall sound sounding a lot louder to the listener. Now, compressors aren't always used in this way. Sometimes we just take that loudest part and we control it. We say, hey, look, when the loudest part gets too loud, just turn it down a little bit. So we've just controlled the loudest parts from kind of poking out too much, if you like. Now, if you don't understand how to achieve this with a compressor, then it's definitely worth watching my other video about how to use compressors. I'll put a link up here and down in the description as well. In that video, I go through the main controls of threshold, ratio, attack and release, and I show you how to implement them to get the results you want from a compressor. So what's the difference between regular compression and sidechain compression? Well, with all compression, we determine a certain point at which we'll start to turn things down, and that's called the threshold. Now, if we were to compress, say, a bass guitar and describe what we were doing in everyday English, we would say, hey, when the bass guitar reaches the threshold, turn the bass guitar down. Now, you'll notice here that the thing that we're listening to, the bass guitar, is the same thing that we turn down, the bass guitar. With sidechain compression, that is not the case. So we could, for example, say, hey, when the kick drum reaches the threshold, turn the bass guitar down. So the thing we're listening to, the source, is different to the thing we're turning down, the target. That's sidechain compression. But how do we go about using it in Cakewalk by BandLab? So let's start off with a really straightforward example. And whilst this is not something that you'll be doing very often, it does serve the purpose of demonstrating sidechain compression in a really easy to understand manner. Now what we can see is this project here with two tracks, the blue track and the green track. The blue track is some music. In fact, it's some bass guitar and some drums all bounced down into one track. The green track is my voice, not my singing voice, but my spoken voice. I'm talking over the top of this music. Now the goal here is to lower the volume of the music when I start talking and when I stop talking to return the music back to its regular level. This is a technique sometimes referred to as ducking and it's often used in radio, television and YouTube channels like this one. So first of all, let's just have a listen to the piece without any compression added at all. So this is me talking over the top of a piece of music and the goal here is that when I'm talking the music will get more quiet and when I stop talking the music will then get louder again. 
So as you can hear, sometimes the music kind of overpowers the voice a little bit. So we want to lower the volume of the music at times. So it's on the music channel where we will add the compression. So I'll go down to the effects section here. I'll click on the plus button. I'll go to insert audio effects, go up to my cakewalk folder, and I'm gonna insert the Sonatus compressor. This is the free compressor which comes with Cakewalk by BandLab. Now I'm gonna mute the vocal for a moment, or the voice, and I'm just gonna have a listen to the music by itself. And I want you to take note what's to what's happening in the graph here. You'll see a white dot going up and down, hopefully in time with the music. So in the compressor's normal state like this, it's that level which it's gonna be looking at to see if it goes over the threshold or not. So the level of the music itself. And that, of course, is not what we want. We want to listen to the vocal and determine whether that is going over the threshold. So I'll unmute it here. And what I need to do to set this up is to do something really, really simple. I'll go to the send section of the voice here on the green channel, I'll click on plus. And apart from the usual sends that we would have, we can see this one here, which is the sonatus effects compressor side input. That is the compressor that we have on our music. So we just click on that and we're done. Now the compressor will be listening to the voice instead of the music itself. So let's play it again. I'll unmute the voice and let's have a listen. Take note of what's happening with that white dot now. So this is me talking over the top of a piece of music and the goal here is that when I'm talking the music will get more quiet and when I stop talking the music will then so you can see now that the compressor is actually listening to the voice rather than the music. But nothing's happening yet because we haven't set up our compressor, especially the threshold and the ratio. So I'm gonna start off with the ratio because it's set to one to one at the moment, and that is no good at all. No compression will happen with that set like that. So I'm gonna change that to just a default setting. It doesn't really matter, but I'll go to two to one, just to make sure that we can actually see and hear some compression. And the next thing I'm gonna do is bring the threshold down. Now, I noticed that the voice was um, going sort of around this area, halfway up and above. It occasionally went uh, to something just down here. I think that was probably just me shuffling around some background noise. So we don't want to go down that low. But essentially, whenever we do hear the voice, we want to have the compression kicking in. So I'm actually going to set it you know, down pretty low down here. So whenever we hear any talking, the compressor will work. So let's have a listen now. So this is me talking over the top of a piece of music. And the goal here is that when I'm talking, the music will get more quiet. And when I stop talking, Okay, so you can hear the effect already. That's pretty cool. It's already working. It does sound a little bit strange. Now, what I like to do at this point is to actually mute that vocal. So I'm muting the source, and then I'm gonna change this from uh, its default state, which is the post state for the send, um, to make sure that it's sending to the compressor in a pre-state, meaning it's not gonna be affected by whether I change the fader level on the vocal or I mute it as I have done now. The signal's still gonna go through to the compressor now let's have a listen to what's happening to that music without actually hearing the vocal at all. You can hear some weird kind of pumping there. It doesn't sound nice at all. So the first thing I want to do actually is get the attack down a bit lower. I'm not going to get it down to zero. I'm going to just going to put it just a little bit above zero so that we do make sure that as soon as we get over the threshold, the compressor does kick in right away. But because I can hear that sort of pumping, I think the release is set too short, meaning um, even when I don't speak for just a second, it already releases the compressor, and that's where you get those sort of sudden uh, little pumping sort of effects there. So I'm just going to increase um, the release up there somewhat, so something much further up. Let's have a listen now. Still pumping a bit, so I'll just push it up a bit. So it seems, seems a lot more smooth now. So let's have a listen in context with the actual voice. So this is me talking over the top of a piece of music. And the goal here is that when I'm talking, the music will get more quiet. And when I stop talking, the music will then get louder again. 
So that's working basically as I want it to. Now the thing that will now control how much I turn it down is the ratio itself. Now it's probably going down perhaps a little bit too much at the moment, so I'll just increase that ratio a little bit, say so put it there, you know, 1.5 to 1. Have another listen. So this is me talking over the top of a piece of music, and the goal here is that when I'm talking, the music will get more quiet, and when I stop, so that's the basic use of this technique. So you can see that it is the voice which controls whether the compressor engages or not, not the music itself. So with this example, we see a much more common use of sidechain compression. We have the same music again, this time without the voice on it, and we have our instruments separated onto different tracks. So the green track here is the bass guitar, and all of the blue tracks are different elements of the drum kit. Now most importantly, we have the kick on its own channel here. And that's important because we're gonna be using the kick drum to control the volume of the bass guitar. And this is very common when you want the kick to kind of punch through the bass guitar, not have the bass guitar kind of masking it. So momentarily, while the kick is happening, we're going to lower the volume of the bass guitar. But before we apply any compression at all, let's just have a quick listen to the track. So as I say, it's the level of the bass guitar which we want to control, so that's where we want to add our compressor. So we'll go to the effects section of the bass guitar, click on plus, click on insert audio effects, then go up to the cakewalk folder I have here and then insert the Sonatus compressor again. Now we can go ahead and set the input for that compressor to be the kick drum. So we go to the kick drum channel, we go to the send section, click on plus, and then go down and select that compressor. So now it's the level of the kick drum which will control the level of the bass guitar okay so nothing's going to happen much at the moment because we haven't set a ratio it's still on one to one so no compression can happen so let's start off by setting that just to a common value of two to one just so we'll definitely hear something and then i'm going to drag that threshold down now i'm going to drag it down fairly low there okay um i want it to try and kind of kick in and affect the volume of the bass guitar pretty much as soon as the kick is reaching above a very low level. Now also while I'm here, I'm just gonna reduce this knee down to a hard knee, so there's no soft uh, change happening there at all. We could adjust that again later, but I like to start off with it hard. Now let's have a listen and see what's happening so far. Okay, so you can hear it's definitely happening. It's probably a little bit too extreme. Now the main thing that's gonna control that is the ratio, okay? But before I go ahead and adjust that ratio, I just wanna make sure my attack is down nice and low, okay? I'll set it down, I don't know. Let's go pretty small here, down to four. I still want some of the transient of the bass guitar to come through, but I want it to expose that kick. Let's have a listen. Now the thing you want to be careful of with a piece of music like this is that, that you release the compressor soon enough so that and we're not compressing the sort of next note at all. If we put it up you know, to a really long uh, release and have a listen, you know, it's, it just crushes that bass guitar. It never gets a chance to come back at all. So we'll just sort of set it down there. You can use math to set this according to the tempo of the song, but I prefer that you use your ears. It's just as good in this case anyway. So let's have a listen. Now the other thing that you can do to sort of refine this is again mute those drums. So I've got them going through one bus right at the end here. So I'll mute those drums. I'll make sure that this is set to uh, pre-fader there. And let's have a listen to the bass guitar all by itself. So it sounds really, really odd, right? So it could be that I've got the uh, release in the wrong place, but I think it's more likely that the ratio here is just being a little bit too aggressive. I just want it to come down just a small amount. I may just uh, adjust that knee again to make it more subtle. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it does sound odd by itself because we're not going to be listening to it by itself. But what we can hear is a lot of the sustain of the bass coming through there and not so much of the transient at the beginning. You'll have to go on to refine it, adjust yourself. Usually you're looking for a, a sort of a balancing act between uh, that ratio, the threshold and the attack and release. Let's have a listen in the music. So that's a really common use of sidechain compression. So what are you gonna use sidechain compression for? Or what have you already been using it for? Let me know in the comments down below. Now if you're confused and have any questions at all about today's video, do ask in the comments down below and myself or somebody else from this fine community will do their very best to help you out. Now you can help me out by liking this video. Do that now for me because it does let YouTube know that this video is useful and it should show it to other people. Now if you didn't like this video for any reason whatsoever, hit the dislike button twice and if you do like this kind of content make sure you subscribe right now and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos and I'll definitely see you in the next video.